And with this, I would like to welcome Franz Dirwen on the stage. Franz is founder and co-owner of the veterinary clinic Lintjeshof, um, uh, in which he is uh, working in different European countries as a veterinarian, veter 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 veterinarian consultant. Uh, Franz graduated from the University of Ghent in Belgium, uh, and since that he works as a veterinarian and he is specializing uh, in swine and health production. Franz is a member of several organizations, such as the very important organization called Swine and Wine, yeah. which is a nice one. <laughs> and Franz, you will talk to uh, a very interesting topic called sustainable use of antibiotics in swine production, the Dutch experience. So, Franz, please. <clears throat> Thank you so much for the nice introduction. Thank you for the invitation here on this uh, beautiful symposium here in Munich. And I'm happy to deal some details with you about uh, the experience in uh, the Netherlands about uh, the reduction of antibiotics. First, uh, I will introduce a little bit my uh, veterinary clinic to you. Something about the Dutch swine structures. Um, how did it happen, the total antibiotic reduction? Where did this uh, whole discussion come from? The development in the last five years in uh, three major clinics in the Netherlands. Uh, something what I call is bioefficient intensive production and the major importance of higher health. And I hope in the end we have some time for uh, conclusions and some discussion. Lintjes Hof um, is a veterinary group in the Netherlands. We have uh, several locations in the Netherlands, in Belgium and in the Germany. We are working with 21 swine vets and we are looking after around about 350,000 sows in the circle uh, Hans Arstrup mentioned, uh, <laughs> in fact, uh, this uh, afternoon. Um, we like to have short lines, so we have our own pharmacy and we have our own laboratory. Most uh, veterinary practi uh, practices in the Netherlands have their own pharmacy and we are allowed to uh, deliver drugs to the farmers based on a one-to-one -one contract. So every farmer has one vet responsible for delivering the drugs and for the consultancy. Based on this contract, the vet needs to go every month and see the animals. And in this case, he may prescribe drugs as antibiotics. We are all in the quality chain in the IKB. Um, we have the good veterinary practice license, we need it to be in the quality chain and we are of course, uh, we are certified swine vets. The Netherlands is not only a country of uh, tulips and windmills, but we have also uh, a uh, big swine industry and at this moment it's responsible for a turnover of 2.4 million euros. We have around about 900,000 sows. We are producing 24 million piglets. We are slaughtering 40 million, so we are importing some slaughtering uh, fat enough. But we are also exporting, like the Danish, uh, 12 million piglets, mainly to Germany. Uh, other countries where we are exporting are, of course, Romania, Hungary, Poland, and so on. If I look at the 90s, in the Netherlands, we had 22,000 farms with uh, swine on it. And our uh, projection to 2015 is only 3,000, 2,500. Only 10% of the total amount of farms in 20 years is remaining. Although the total amount of uh, animals stay the same. So this means a uh, tremendous scaling up. And as you see in uh, this uh, pointer, As you see in uh, this, uh, I'm looking for the pointer. Well, uh, these are the dense areas, the brown areas. Okay, thank you. The brown areas, uh, we have a density of more than 5,000 animals per square kilometer. And these are really dense areas. Um, what are the drivers of success for the swine industry in the Netherlands? I think the scaling up, with the scaling up to uh, some farms, even 5,000 sows, so we were used to 200, 300, 500 sows per farm, um, made the cost price lower. 
On the other hand, uh, better technical data. So the best farms at this moment are going up to 33, 34 weaned piglets pro sow per year. This means producing more piglets, more depending on export at this moment. So we need a good professional relationship with our buyers. And the buyers are mostly the uh, fatteners in Germany at this moment. There's a strong focus on a good farm management. And uh, because of the whole discussion about the reduction of antibiotics and the resistance discussion, there is also a focus on uh, health, animal health. And of course, we have to produce with a high quality. High quality is being paid in Germany. The German fatteners are paying more money for a good piglet. And we have to compete with the Danish, because as we heard, they are also producing 10 million piglets, which they are exporting to the German market and the Polish market. So quality is very important. A closer view of what happened the last five years to uh, the discussion about antibiotic resistance. In 2007, the Maran report, that's um, a surveillance system in the Netherlands, uh, indicated the uh, growth of the total antibiotics in the Netherlands. Although the growth promoters, you see the dark blue area, were phased out in Europe. So everybody was thinking the total amount of antibiotics, sold antibiotics, will go down. But the opposite occurred. So, in fact, we, the veterinarians, we were prescribing more antibiotics as we did before. We filled in the lack from the growth promoters. And this is what was reported. Also in 2007, we had some <coughs> deadly casualties of multi-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, some casualties of ESBLs. We were compared to Denmark. All, new all newspapers were writing the Dutch farmers are using five times more antibiotics as the Danish colleagues are doing. Is it right? Is it wrong? It was in the newspapers. Everybody was in this discussion, consumers, hospitals. And the statement was at that moment, human resistance patterns are strongly influenced by excessive use of antibiotics in the feed production, in animal feed production. Whether this is right or it's wrong, it became a political item. And political item, you have no influence on this anymore. And the government asked us, the farmers and the veterinarians, to reduce in five years the total amount of antibiotics. So 50% less from 2009 to 2013. How did we do so? First, we uh, introduced the defined daily doses. Uh, in fact, these are the exposure days that an animal is exposed to antibiotic use. The second thing, uh, we had a new database. So the VETSIS database is an independent database. It picks up all data about antibiotics from our management system, from the veterinary management, and puts it in an uh, independent database. At this moment, we can see exactly for each farm how the defined daily doses is going. Uh, 2012, the SDA, it's the Dutch Veterinary Authority for Medicine, it was established. And they are setting benchmarks. They are setting benchmark system and benchmarks for farms and for vets. And in fact, this is the idea. So at the horizontal line, these are the defined daily doses. So here, the benchmark indicator is 10 uh, exposure days for sows, 2012. 50% of the farms in the green zone, 25% of the farms in the orange zone, and they are on the action level, they are in the red zone. So the idea is to move all farms to the left. Farms who are consequently in the red zone, uh, government is thinking about the system for penalties now, but it's not yet that far. This is what happened in um, three major clinics in the Netherlands. Um, they were all swine clinics. We started with defined daily dosage in 2009. Uh, this is the average line of uh, almost 40. And in the end, 2013, we are at 11. So we uh, had a reduction of almost 70% uh, in sows. And we are almost at the target level. And I think 2014, we are going down a little bit. But there is a slowdown in the reduction, clearly. 
For the fattening pigs, we see the same, and the reduction is even stronger. We have a reduction in these clinics, which are representing 50% of the swine industry in the Netherlands of uh, 70%. So, how did we do this so quickly in five years? Because it surprised us as well. As a vet, we were talking lots and lots and lots about management on the farms, about climate control, uh, all kinds of things, housing and so on. We started uh, to look at the prudent use of antibiotics. So the right dosage, the right amount of days, the right antibiotic for the right diagnosis and so on. Of course, at the meantime, we had the introduction of the Circo vaccines and Circo played a huge role in this, of course. And what we see is that the amount of vaccines in the meantime, increased. This is what happened in our veterinary practice. Uh, these are the months turnover in antibiotics, turnover in vaccines. And we see in the meantime, the vaccines are doubling in turnover and the uh, antibiotics are reduced to 60, 70 percent. We are looking for alternatives like uh, prebiotics, like uh, probiotics, like uh, MCFAs, middle chain fatty acids immune stimulation products, and so on and so on. Quite experimental, but I have heard a lot of things today. I think perhaps we can, can help us. It can help us in this uh, fight. Also, an uh, antimicrobial formulary was introduced in 2011. And the typical thing is that this uh, formulary is not based on veterinary resist resistance patterns, but it's uh, based on human resistance patterns. So we have first choice products uh, with no interference to human uh, resistance patterns. The second choice possible. And the third choice, the quinolones and the uh, cephalos, they are only preserved for human medicine. Now, what we are seeing in the sow herds, we are uh, using 75, six, sorry, 65% uh, first choice products, and we are still using 35% uh, uh, second choice products. This is discutable on one hand, but on the other hand, the patterns are based on human medicine, and we are not using third choice products anymore. In the sow or in the fattening herds, in fact, uh, we are using 95% first choice products, so this is doing much better. Conclusion from this part. A strong antimicrobial use uh, reduction. All clinics after four years at the same level. Quarter four, we see a slight increase. Seasonal influence, in my opinion, winter time. Reduction is slowing down in 2013 and is even slowing down in 2014. First choice had, of course, the strongest reduction. Second choice is still you being used 35% in the sow production. And third choice are not anymore used. We thought we did a good, great job. But many people were thinking elsewhere. So we were thinking we are more than 50% reduction, and we did it in four years. Government asked us, especially uh, regulating the parliament, to reduce another 20% in the next two years. So the next uh, goal is in 2016, another 20%. Discussion is, are we walking on the edge of welfare? So we reduced already 75%. Is this really possible to go? to 80, 90 percent reduction. Although, until now, this reduction didn't affect our technical data because we are weaning, as I said, more piglets. Average daily weight gain is still going up and the feed conversion is still going down. What's the challenge in the future? I think uh, we need a production to the consumer demands. Consumer asks for welfare. Consumer has ask for sustainability, safe meat. On the other hand, we need to produce for the, our producers. It, must, it needs to be finan uh, financially acceptable. I think we need to go to a system which is not depending on antibiotics. Without antibiotics, impossible. It needs to be safe and sustainable. And we need to have a certain production. We need to feed the world. If you look at the greenhouse effect, from uh, pork production, we are doing much better as the beef and the cattle are doing. And uh, biological production is producing more greenhouse uh, gas as uh, industrial production. Industrial production has a bigger output. Cost price is very lower. So 
in my opinion. In fact, we should combine these two systems, and I call this bioefficient food production. If we can produce in a system with the, the strong protocols for an industrialized production, on the other hand, we can take care of sustainability, of welfare, and we make a combination of this. And I think everybody in the chain must be aware of this. And we can produce, not depending on antibiotics, I think we can convince the consumer for this. And to do so, I think health is the most important topic in this. So if you are producing on a higher health situation, you don't need the, these antibiotics. So there is no problem with resistance. And at the moment, we are only using 60% of the genetic reservoir of a pig. So if we are producing on a higher health situation, perhaps we can go to 65. It gives a return. It's safe, no residue. Higher health means as well less diseases. Less diseases is more welfare. And I, in my opinion, if an animal feels well, it produces well. So sustainable, efficient, it's a return. So in my opinion, we have to invest in higher health. How can we do this? What we did on the farms was, of course, uh, biosecurity management and so on. Uh, we talked about the SPF systems, air filtration, and you no know, birds and mycoplasma in the dense areas are going 10 kilometers by wind. But I think what's very important on a national level, we go to a blood monitoring system. So we know from each farm exactly what is the health status. And if we combine animals from different farms, we need to know the origin and what's happening. So what are my conclusions? Um, we have to go from, we need to make a combination between organic and intensi intensive production. And I call it bioefficient production. It needs to be sustainable, and in this way we can produce. Health is a direct investment on this. And I think for the pig producer and for the veterinarian, it's direct income. We did the first 50% reduction in the Netherlands, and it was easy. I think uh, we can also say perhaps we were using too much. But the next 20% will be more difficult. And I think we only can reach this next 20, 30% when we have sectorial changes. It is not possible to do this only between the farmer and the vet. No antibiotics is the question now. Government is asking, and there are many people thinking, can we go to a zero option? Well, in this uh, way, I think we get lost of the total swine production in the Netherlands in a few years. It's completely impossible. But we need to look for systems in which we are producing independent of antibiotics. And I think the key is in the management and in the higher health. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Franz Dirwin. Very interesting, and you see the trend. Ten years after the ban of antibiotic growth promoters, so people, please take the pictures, including France. <laughs> so ten years after the ban of antibiotic growth promoters, now the trend goes to the reduction of treatment antibiotics. I'm sure there are some questions to France, some burning questions. In the back, in the last row. So thank you for a very nice speech. Um, I have a question. If there was also a reduction of antibiotic-resistant bacteria observed after you reduce um, antibiotic use. Sorry, I don't understand. How is the picture about the, how is the observation of the antibiotic-resistant bacteria over the time? Because there was an yeah. antibiotic uh, reduction. How is it? Yeah, we had a strong antibiotic reduction, of course, the last years. Uh, last reports um, are saying that um, resistant patterns, veterinary, are going back to the same pattern as we had five, ten years ago. So old antibiotics like penicillin are working better. Although the human resistant patterns are not changing. But veterinary, we are really going back to the situation ten years ago. Okay, thank you. Second question. Franz, don't you think that you have also uh, 
uh, had an advantage due to the uh, change of the production system in, in your country? Because you have shown us the figures, the strong reduction of the number of farms having pigs. And on the other hand, you know, for, uh, former times you had family farms, 500, 600 sows, fair to finish. Now you have different systems, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 sows selling the piglets, producing in multi-site production. So the structure of your pork production has already been changed in the same time as well. Not always. If it is in combination with a higher health situation, with poor free farms and micro free farms, I say yes. But also on these big farms, these huge farms, we are facing a lot of problems. And I think purse is one of the main topics in this. But of course, we have less transport from different farms. That's, that's, that's obvious. OK. Uh, third quick question. Yes, please. From France. Hello. What about the cost of the health? I mean, uh, is there a transfer uh, between antibiotics and vaccination? How did you get this 25% reduction of antibiotics? Well, uh, the total health costs are gone what up. What is the amount of the cost? Sorry? What is the, the amount of the cost of health per kilogram of carcass in, in the Netherlands? Well, uh, I don't know per kilogram carcass, but uh, pointed out to a piglet, it's uh, around about three, three, four euros. And uh, vaccines are rather expensive, of course, so it must be a return on investment in the end. But health costs are going up. Okay, so thank you very much. We have later time for uh, another questions, for, uh, for more questions to France. Thank you very much.